Macaroni. You're dumb. You're dumb. I feel it in my hole. Have you heard of? Uh, have you heard Morgan? Um, Morgan. I was almost said Morgan Royale. Morgan McMichael's is a parody of Padam. I didn't know Morgan McMichael's did parodies. Yeah, it's called You're Dumb. And those lyrics? No, no, no. They feel in my hole. I just, I just, I just said that. I don't know. I, I know it's You're Dumb. You're Dumb. I don't know what's after that. Um, I mean, that's what that's. So that, uh, Monet that's combined really that with Manila's parody, Come Dump, which is Come Dump, Come Dump. I feel it in my hole. There we go. I knew I knew her there somewhere. So Manila has one. Bobby, you should do one. You know, I don't really write parodies anymore. Um, that's Willem, not really part of my life. Willem, they blocked you on. Wow. There you go. You you already on it, Mary. You you got you got the whole thing covered. I feel. I haven't written a parody in a very very long time. Um, sometimes during rehearsal, I write parodies of Madonna songs just for myself. What do you say you write them? Are you just doing them in your head or are you like, are you like, I just like, like hum them out and like, I just think of little funny parts that I think are funny. Do one for the names. Like instead of holiday, I go Hollandaise. <laughs> Hollandaise. It's about holiday sauce. So. Mayonnaise. No. And instead of Vogue, it's vague. I go, come on. Vague, let your body move to the moon. <laughs> okay, I'm currently dating Ohio. Wait, and I, wait, wait. Uh, and then my, my, my favorite part of my, my vague one is when he gets to the part with, with all the uh, names, I go, that one lady and the other one, and that one guy from the movie. <laughs> vague. Have you ever sang, have you ever um, uh, sung these to Madonna herself? Um, yeah, I've sang Holland Days to her before. She thought it was and funny. She just laughed. I mean, we didn't like ruminate on it very long. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't ask her for sure a full Jan. breakdown. Sure, Jan. I think I just. I think I just looked at her and yelled "Hollandaise," and she like laughed. Have you? Okay, so I used to be not used like I'm not anymore. I haven't seen him, seen one in a long time. But um, for some reason, growing up in St. Lucia, because again, sometimes we will get like offshoot channels, like randomly from different countries in the states on our cable. So there used to be a channel, I forget what it was called, maybe it was USA Network. What did I say network? Network. And they would play that movie that she did um with <sighs> See, I remember you know this movie. She is with this, she has this best friend that's gay, and they have a kid together, and then she marries um and she marries a man, and then like her and this best gay friend have this like tumultuous thing because she wants to like live a happy life with this like this is with her new husband, but the gay guy that she fathered this fathered this kid with is like, but you can't leave me like with my kid. I love my kid. You know what movie I'm talking about? Wait, who's in this movie? Madonna. It is called the do you, the next best thing with I Madonna do not know and Rupert Rupert Everett. Thing with Rupert that movie, y'all. That movie was was low key really good. I was, oh, I'm remembering it as good. You know what? You as as you get older and like you think a movie was good, then you go back and watch it again. And you're like, ugh. Like I did that recently with The Strangers. For the longest time, The Strangers was one of my favorite movies of all time. And then I watched it again. Or I, actually, where I mean, I started dating, and I was like, oh, it actually isn't that. It's fine. It's not a great movie. You know, I have never done that. Well, I've done that in that direction before, but usually old movies, I just have so much uh, love for them that they're still fun to me. But I, but I did recently, um, not recently. That's not that's not true. Maybe about a year ago or so, maybe less than a year ago, I finally watched the first um, Harry Potter movie movie on a plane, and I thought it was absolutely abysmal. The acting was so bad. I it was the graphics. Not the graphics were horrible. Damn. The graphics were horrible, and I was like, "How is this?" And that's honestly, that's also how I feel when I go back and watch. Um, I didn't grow up with Disney Channel, and so when I go back and watch Disney shows like "That's a Raven" and "Sweet Life with Jack and Cody," no, I'm like, "That's a Raven" ages very well. It's still a very good show. I think I think you have to grow up liking it. I think that you have to grow up finding that humor funny. You nasty. Like I think you have to like. <laughs> you just did that. Okay, that was a big laugh. That was a real laugh. I really laughed. 
Well, it's because that is like, I think it's because that's like in your core, like that's already in you. You already think it's funny because you, you're you it's already part of you. And I, I feel like if you did not grow up thinking, watching those shows, you're like, I don't get it. These are low key, not funny. I mean, just like you watch old, like Amanda Bynes was kind of, Amanda Bynes was so fucking No, that's not true. Amanda Bynes is brilliant. I don't care what age you watch some of the, the if you watch sh- like the Amanda Bynes show, even if you've never seen it, I still think today you'd laugh. I see again, but I think to your point, Bob, I think that's because it's ingrained in you. That's it's, it's, that is a core memory no. for you. Yes, not this Amanda Bynes the shows and uh, all that, all, all that, that was like funny. Oh, good. It was a very, but it, Bob, you literally, that is your point that you're making. You grew up on these things. So, because you are no, whacking. What, I'm, say, no, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, I think that those shows are, what, that's not my point. My point is, by the way, it's just opinion based. So, it, it doesn't mean I'm right or wrong. What I'm saying is, I think that all show. that in the Amanda Bynes show, those, the, the bits from those shows are, in my opinion, objectively funny. Whereas, um, a lot of the Disney Channel shows when you were a kid, like Sweet Life and all that stuff. Um, I, I Carly, the show, I Carly was not Disney. Was not Disney. Say, I, well, I anyway, Carly was after that. my time. Uh, well, anyway, I think what it is is like you were just programmed to laugh because you knew you were supposed to, or the laugh track would make you laugh. And then by the time you get around to watching it, <laughs> You're like, wait, like, have you ever gone to a comedy show with a comedian who has a lot, a lot of niche humor based on their um, online content? I have. No. And I, wa- and I, and everyone around me is laughing. I'm like, what's happening? Why is everyone well, laughing? That's true. I have, yes, I have, I have. And I'm like, what is going? This is wild. Why is everyone? I don't get it. Yeah. And then someone's like, you don't watch the show, and I'm like, you're right. I do not watch the show. You ate, you ate with that one. You ate. We should. I disagree. Have, we gotta, I think that. that well, you, I think that's you're, you're the reason. Whatever's worth, I think you're going to get more support than me on this one because I just didn't grow up watching it, so I just don't get it, and I just don't think it's very. But I, I'm, I'm usually pretty good with like finding humor in a lot of stuff. I'm pretty good at being like, oh, you know, actually, I can see why people. Uh, oh, when are you going to start doing that about your own material? Anytime soon, or I don't have to do it. People do already. Because I'll have you know. You know what? When you have the greats like. Rosie O'Donnell, Wanda Sykes, Whoopi Goldberg, and Chelsea Handler all saying you're funny. All of them. Okay, then first of all, Chelsea Handler has said I'm funny. Whoopi Goldberg has said I'm funny. funny as well. So when on the View, bitch, she said you're funny. The yes. one, okay, w- roll the footage. Roll that beautiful being on the on the View. Whoopi Goldberg said Monet exchange is funny. Not on, on an interview when we when we hung out backstage and we're like, man, you're oh, so funny. unprovable. And Got it. also, it at, um, on public TV, Audra McDonald about Monet had said I was gagged. Okay, I said funny. We're talking about humor. Okay. Monet exchange is a great singer. Of course, Audra McDonald performance. Text you, text, text, text. If you if you if you're so cool, text Whoopi Goldberg right now. Text her and ask her. The thing is. I have humorist. Audrey McDonald has great moments of humor. I have humorist. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, now, so, so not only have you tried to slander Raven Simone, sorry, Simonier's name, now you're trying to cover Audrey McDonald too on this podcast. You are acting wild today, and I won't have any of it. You'll have nothing of nothing. What I'm going <laughs> to have is this. We have decided to do a very bold undertaking wait, 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 today. Wait, hold on before we do that. I want, to say, I want to say this. I am here in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah, by the way, we're going to be here forever, so I think we should start, but go ahead. Can, 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 this is our... Bitch, you are not the captain of the ship, Mary. We are we are dr- staring it together. Well, go on, Monet. Do, do your thing. Do your thing, 21. <laughs> 21. 21, 21, 21. Um, so I am here in Dayton, Ohio. And you know, I mean, not just Bob and I or whatever, but we... Everybody likes fried chicken. Like, and I'm talking about like the greats. Like, pop, like although but Popeye's fried chicken has gone down the drain in the past 10 years. I don't know what the fuck they did with the recipe. I don't know what kind of chicken they're using, but Popeye's chicken has gone bananas. It is bad. Except for the chicken sandwich. That's still good. Um, but like people like raising cane and like what? You don't think so? I don't no, that's not my experience. I mean, I think Popeye's is good. Popeye's has never been my has never been my favorite to be TBH. Um I'm also from the South where we eat a lot of fried chicken. Um, and Popeyes is fine. It's always been fine to me. Um, 
But go ahead. You're saying. Um, and like Zaxby's. Zaxby's, I I I used to love Zaxby's, but now since I've had a since Raisin Cane's has uh, percolated my palate, I I have to say, like, Raisin Cane's to me right now is top tier best fried chicken of any fast food chain. Would you agree? Mm, yeah, Raisin Cane's is pretty good. Um I'm trying to think. Raisin Cane's, Popeyes, uh, Jesus Chicken. Um, KFC, chicken? Jesus Chicken. You know Jesus Chicken. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Know, know chicken. <laughs> Stop saying Jesus. Um, <laughs> KFC. Well, you also never heard of Guthrie's. No. Ooh, Guthrie's, baby. Guthrie's used to fucking have me in a choke hold. Guthrie's had me by the... <laughs> um, <laughs> But Raising Canes is pretty good. I got to admit, yeah, Raising Canes is up there. They, so they don't have a large variety. Obviously, obviously, they only sell chicken tenders, so they don't have a, like a lot of variety. Yeah, um, their menu isn't very uh, varied. Uh, Money, we got to get started with our thing. I know we're, we're not, not at the break yet, but we're we trying to do we have... their answer to Raising Canes. It's called Honey Bees. Didn't you say you're not the only? Didn't you say you're not the only one steering this ship? So I would. I was us steering. I was visiting my story. So I was like, "Ooh, this is clearly like the Raising Canes dupe over here in Dayton." So I ordered it. When I tell you this chicken, y'all, was fucking garbage. Honeybees was trash. The chicken, the breading was falling off of the thing. The chicken was a little tough. The bread was like a little rubbery on around the end. I am so upset and disappointed with my motherfucking honeybees chicken. I want a refund. You should get down there and try to get one. And also, they get you because they don't say like you know what raisin canes, whatever. They say three piece, whatever. This one, it's like a third of a pound, a half a pound. I know how much fucking chicken is in a half of a pound, bitch. I don't even have a scale here. I'm weighing my chicken. Who's weighing? Who knows how many pounds of chicken they're getting? Now you wanted to divert this whole thing just so you can do a takedown piece of honeybees. I'm screaming. Um, well, listen, That's my I'm going to reiterate again. We have a very uh, large order in front of us. Y'all, we have decided that we are going to try to uh, talk a little bit about literally every single queen from RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, we're going to have to do this in two parts. We have, we're going to have to do one through eight and then nine through. There's no way we're going to get through all of it. There's no way. Well you, won't, you well, you won't let us get started. So you're right. We're not. You won't let us get started. <laughs> oh, and we're specifically doing the U.S. Jesus Christ. Every time, every time I try to start, you're like, I want to talk more about other things. And then you go, we're never going to make it through this. We're doing the U.S. seasons because Bob and I have not seen all the international ones. Um, so, and then it's just, it's going to be out of control if we try to do France, Spain. Uh, time, we, we don't have enough episodes. So we're gonna get started with the first girl to go home. Uh, by the way, we're we're, we're reviewing uh, season one Watchery right now, so feel free to check that out on our show Watchery. Um, we had a little lapse in um, time, but we're back on track. Victoria Porkchop Parker Monet. Um, the, she is the she has the prestige of being the first ever eliminated girl in the history of Drag Race, and she gets her name shouted out pretty much every finale. She does, and like even in Victoria Victoria Pork Chalk, Pork Chop Parker was um, was the name. Remember the Pork Chop Loading Dock in season thirteen, the first episode when if you got yep. eliminated lip sync, you went to the Pork Chop Loading Dock. So what a nice she has. She literally has a, some a piece of real estate at the Drag Race uh, lot. So good for her. Yeah, she's been cemented for sure as a. Uh, Why as is that? A, because she has the position of being the first girl to ever go home. She she's like she has a she is in a very unique position being the first ever eliminated. So I think whenever you're the first of something, you're gonna be remembered for a long time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, um to Miss Tammy, Tammy Brown, Brown who was the second to be eliminated on RuPaul's drag race. Tammy Brown, honestly, she has Tammy Brown has one of the most iconic um um uh what you call it? Uh thing at the end, reunion, Re- reunion. Uh, with RuPaul. That shit so good walking children in nature and rupaul yells at tammy in that like high-pitched voice iconic i love well you were there for another one of rupaul's fights with a with a root girl so you, you you got to see it in person did he fight with asia i don't remember i remember did asia the, the, the vixen got up and walked out during the middle of the reunion but RuPaul didn't scream though. What, what, what this one? RuPaul was like, "Tammy, you forgot who you are. You forgot who you are. Like you, we have never seen yelled, RuPaul yeah. get that upset." 
w- w- did she w- was she just like really calm during the Vixen thing? I have to rewatch it, I guess. She was calm. Uh, uh, Asia was the one acting acting but Um Let's go on to um Akasha, who I haven't heard I'm much sorry, about that was, that in a, a long break. time. That was, a, that was a break thing, not a let's move on. Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, Bob, 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 wait, Bob, is, is, Let's take a break. Well, I couldn't see. I was I was looking at the list of girls. Oh. Um, we're, and we're back. Listen, guys, just to be clear, I'm not. I, I know a lot of y'all. I know this hotel room is is jank. I it looks like I'm filming in one of those rooms of Call of Duty. Um, girl, <laughs> you look like you in a pay by the hour suite. Okay, you look like one of the places girl. I used to be in high school. <laughs> Did I say that? I used, I used to go to. Oh, okay, so anyway, I shouldn't have always. I'll One thing we need to talk about your 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 high school day. I, I hope your mom don't listen to this podcast because if my age, I I know she's gonna be stressed. <laughs> yeah, you better be stressed, honey. Oh wait, really quickly, can we talk about Monet's Instagram post? What Instagram post? What is Monet posting on Instagram? The most recent Instagram post. The thirst trap. <laughs> oh God, Jacob. <laughs> This is one where, let me see. Is there, is there is this another one where Monet swears, but now she doesn't post anything. She does not post nudity on her page. <laughs> well, because now because of this, Jesus. Christ. <laughs> Anytime I post it like that, people will comment because of Bob. People will be like Bob. I mean, like Monet. Bob's mom uses this app all the time. People post that on my stuff all the time. <laughs> this is wrong app, Monet. Jesus Christ! Wrong app. I have an amazing suit. The, I know. I, I saw it. We saw. We saw. Trust me. We saw. Akasha. Let's go into Akasha, who I don't hear much about anymore. I mean, she. I, I think I saw her doing drag. I think I've seen that she's still doing drag. I just haven't. She just kind of like doesn't pop up much for me. How about for you? I've never even met Akasha. Have you? Have you ever met her or seen her in person? Um, no, yeah, we should probably discuss whether or not we've met these queens too. That should be part of our thing. We should talk about whether or not we have any personal experience with them. And I do have personal experience with Porkchop and Tammy, but I don't have any personal experience with, uh, with Akasha now. Yeah, I, I, I have with Tammy. Tammy, to, to you, Tammy, and I did a tour together. What show? In the, the, the Comedy Queen store. She did the after show, the one we did, and she was on the, the tour bus with us, remember? Yes. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. I seem so good. Um, let's go on. <laughs> Did to... you see how you know how dark Pinky Doll is in real life? People are upset. These people are like, oh, she's use, she's using white face. It's like a whole. Have you seen this? Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen most people who are not upset. The most people, the most people I've seen online are like, girl, get get your bag. You pimp the system. That's what I was seeing. But I'm not saying there aren't people who are upset. But I saw I saw folks who were shocked. But most of us like, girl, get that bag. You ate them up with that one. Yeah. Um, um, let's go to Miss Jade, Jade Sotomayor. Sotomayor. I, I met Jade on the season 10 thing when we did the thing with the season one queens. Uh, I remember what it was, whatever. But I met Jade there, and Jade was very sweet. Very, very, very quiet. Very, like, like really quiet woman. I'm pretty sure Jade is, is uh, lives in Chicago, because I've met her in Chicago a few times. And, right. um, yeah, Jade is really, Jade, Jade seems really lovely, and she had a, a pretty, uh, uh, memorable run on the show, even though she didn't, even though she went home fourth, she had a pretty. I feel like, but that's also because I'm, I'm a fan of the show, and I and I and I and I, I was I've been like day one with with Drag Race, so but yeah, I really um enjoyed um yeah she said she, she I don't have a lot to say about her because I haven't met her that many times and I, and I don't really know her that well, you know what I mean? Um, let's go to Angina. How he had cable? Wait, you, had it, you had cable and you saw season one. Congratulations. Let's go into Angina. Angina is um, very tiny, incredibly tiny. And I think Angina was like kind of slated to be one of the winners, one of the people who could win season one of RuPaul's Drag Race. I think that that's how the producers saw her, which is why RuPaul was so dramatic about eliminating her. Yeah, um, I've worked with Angina a few times before, or most recently at um, Moist, the Godoyan Sadie's birthday party. Um, in Liho, and Anjana is always very sweet. Anjana has a lot of shoes. Anjana has a huge shoe collection um, with like pretty, pretty much all Louboutins. It's wild. She's a quote unquote shopaholic, and she owns a lot of designer clothes and bags and shoes. She has a very impressive uh, designer shoe bag and clothing collection. I remember um, when she 
when we when I, I, I her and her husband. I remember them do this like profile on her and her and her husband, and they took on a tour of their house. And because her husband does something in tech or something like that, and it was just like immaculate closet, all these to your point, like designer things. I was like, I remember like back in the day, I was like, oh my god, being on Drag Race can get you a lot of nice stuff. That's what I remember taking away from that. Um, Chanel, I met Chanel on season one of Celebrity Drag Race because she was one of the makeup artists, and I remember it was that whole drama about how because people were saying like Bob and Monet and all those girls are saying that they're doing the makeup, but it's really Chanel. Chanel, is, and I was like, we never said we did the makeup. Why are y'all coming at us? Was it? I don't. I don't. I guess I. I mean, I'm pretty online. I guess I. I avoided that drama. So that one. The, the one time the drama I ever did was, avoid drama. They they went to like Chanel and Mayhem and were like. Oh yeah, and we're gonna film you and have you doing your make the makeup be a part of the show, which is why you need to get into full drag to do these girl, these queens makeup. And then they didn't show. No, that's not that's not quite true. That's not that's not quite true. The uh, so the girls were not in online. full drag doing. Um, do what? <laughs> what did Jacob say? I said so. You have been online. <laughs> no, no. What I'm saying is no. What I'm saying is what you just said isn't true. They were not in full. They weren't in full drag doing the makeup. Um, what I'm saying is, uh, one girl at a time would be in full drag because they did this online, this like a uh, YouTube thing or something that they put online, um, where one of the makeup artists would be in full drag and do like a makeup consult or makeup talk through. So they weren't the the the, the queens were not in full drag uh, doing the celebrities. There was one they queen the in thing face after the controversy. Yeah, yeah because what, they what thought I'm saying. Wait, wait. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is, I don't even know how possible that is because they film it all before it airs. So the girls film those things there in the room, and the girls were not in full drag doing the makeup. But I mean, I have no reason to cape for World of Wonder. Um, but what I'm saying is, when we got there, a lot of us were like, "I'm not, I'm not doing this makeup," and I'm like, "I'm like, I, don't, I didn't do any makeup for, on these people." So then they would have the the queens come in and, and consult, but it wasn't because of fan backlash because they had filmed it while we were still on set. Um, what about you, your experience? Anyway, do what? Your experiences with Chanel. Um, I met Chanel um, on my season. Actually, she she did like a bit during that um, that first episode where they did like the 100, 100 episode recap thing. And um, I mean, I don't have a lot of experience. With Chanel. I know she's she's uh, she's really very 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 professional. Every time I see Chanel, she's one of those like a workhorse. She's okay. a workhorse, and it's always about the work for her, and it's yeah. rarely ever about the drama that I've seen. Anyway, this is just my personal experience with her, I, and I don't have a lot of. I don't think I've done. I don't think I've ever done a show with her, like a, a live show, Me besides either. obviously doing Celebrity Drag Race, and we didn't talk much because it, because the makeup was just such a crunch time. Speaking of people, I never did a show before. Rebecca Glasgow, bitch. I- I have never even heard a beep bop, beep scoop, or anything about Rebecca Glasscock. I've never heard of her at any clubs I've ever been to. I don't know anything about Rebecca Glasscock besides watching this season. Not a thing. So Rebecca Glasscock and I were friends when I when um when she first moved to New York City. Friends we actually like- hung out. No, we were friends. We hung out quite a bit actually. Um I go to her apartment. She come over to my apartment. We mostly went to her apartment though because she lived in Manhattan and I lived in Queens. And you know, you know how it is. People from Manhattan do not visit people in the in the in the, uh, in the outer boroughs. Um, and people from the outer boroughs, quote unquote, go to the city. You know, all the time. Um, for those you don't know, like if you're a New Yorker, anyone who lives like basically above 125 or in the outer boroughs, when you go to Manhattan, you just call it going to the city. Going to the city. Um, I would say anyway, above one forty five. Or like if you if, if you if you want if you want if you want one twenty fifth, you like you don't say I'm going to the city, like you say I'm going downtown. But if you up like in like past one forty five, you say I say no, I think I think if you like up in Washington No, Bob, anyone if you're in Manhattan, you don't say you're going to the city. Well, I mean, I, mean, I I lived in Washington Heights for um um three years and I and I did have that experience of people saying I'm going to the city. Um, and I had the same experience when I lived in Queens. It was just my experience. I'm not saying in it's Queens like, and the outer yeah, but not in Manhattan. Oh, well, in my experience of living in Upper Manhattan for about three years, I that's something that I heard people say. But um, maybe maybe it's a new thing. Maybe it's new, and maybe it wasn't in, in your area. You know what I mean? You know, um, I do what I often, Bob, when we were in your neighborhood in the pandemic, and we're walking down the street, and we had seen those dudes dealing the the injectable drugs. That was something that sticks in my mind so crazy. On like, where? It was, we were walking from that. 
from your super duper food. <laughs> so, mom had a super, a super food towel next to his house. And he would just call it a super duper food towel. I don't know why I was so funny. Anyway, <laughs> we, were walking, food we were walking from there and we were just walking by these two guys. And you see them like they're walking together and one like puts money behind him. The other one hands him like three needles in his thing and he puts it in his coat. It was, I would I'll never forget that. Well, I found out that there were people selling drugs on my windowsill because when that came Which out, and there was a, there was a, there was like on my windowsill, that was on the first floor on the corner. I was like, why is it like forty bucks here, or like ten bucks, or there was some amount of money? And I was like, what is this? And I grabbed it, and then I think Monet what? was like, Girl, I think what? Yes, because that's bitch. They would have get. They would have got you. Oh yeah, I think Monet was like, "Girl, that's drug money." I was like, Ooh. "Oh, oh." <laughs> I, I, I just I said no people doing drop off pickups of drugs. I, I I would assume it's like a you hand it kind of thing. I didn't realize it was like a put it on a windowsill and I mean like putting money on a windowsill and walking away seems like a really bad uh, <laughs> business strategy. Like leaving money out in public seems wild to me. <laughs> what well, I don't I don't work in the I I don't sell drugs, but I feel like if I was a drug dealer, I'd be a very good one. I really feel that in my heart of hearts. <laughs> You often say it's about random things like that. You are such an interesting person. What would you, you tell? Often... <laughs> I mean, if I was going to be in the business, I would never sell drugs. But if I was in the business selling drugs, I would, I would sell the hard stuff that gets you hooked. <gasps> um, oh my if god! It was. Yeah, and I would, and I would get. I would also figure out how to get into um, distribution manufacturing. You know, <laughs> I feel like you would be like the lady from Weeds. I mean, I prefer Nancy um, Botwin, the guy from played by Mary Louise from Harper. Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. I prefer the guy from Breaking Bad, but you know, I'll take I'll take it. Okay, um, let's go. Sell DJ weed though. Weed, weed doesn't seem like it has a big return. On, weed doesn't seem like it has a big ROI. You know what I mean? Return on investment. Yeah. Um, let's go to Nina Flowers, who I think lives in Denver right now. I, I, yeah, um, Nina Flowers. I, again, never met Nina Flowers. I've seen her in person. Oh, have I? I don't think so. Um, I remember before, like, I never, this is my first time seeing season, season one, but I obviously have seen imagery of Nina West, Nina Flowers before this. I used to always think Nina was hot, but in person, I imagine she's very short, so I don't know she would, how much of my tea she would be. She is She is short. She's not very tall. Um, and she's the first root girl I've ever seen live. Um, I saw her at the Ritz um, right after season one aired, and um, it was so packed you could barely get in there. And I had never seen that many people at a drag show freaking out like that. It was just really, uh, and she was sickening. I mean, I, I, I basically saw the top of her ponytail popping around. And then she got on the microphone <laughs> and she um, and she spoke basically uh, only in Spanish um, when she's talking to the microphone. Well, she was like, Damn. she was like, hello, New York. Well, she did say, she's like, hello, New York. And then she was like, do you guys want me to talk in English or in Espanol? And then everyone went crazy for Spanish. And then she spoke, then the rest of the spoke in Spanish. I didn't know what she was saying. Um, but everyone was really pumped up. I'm I'm, I'm going to start to do that in my shows. I'm like, do you guys want me to speak in English or Spanish and just start doing that teleprompter challenge every time? <laughs> yep. Someone mm. wants us to do it in German. Yep. I'm screaming. Um, <laughs> I, oh, I would eat German, by the way. I would eat I, German. I, I I can't speak a a a lick of German. Um, so let's go on to uh, Bibi Zahara Benet, who, by the way, used to be roommates with my best friend back in the day. So back in the day, Bibi Zahara Benet and Frosty Flakes used to be roommates. And before I was on Drag Race, I used to uh, sew dresses for Bibi Zahara Benet. Obviously, I would make dress her dresses. For Bibi. That's so funny to me. I used to be her seamstress back in the day before I was on Drag Race. I used to be <laughs> Bibi Zahara Benet seamstress. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't make a lot. I made probably like maybe like four four dresses. Or if you look at her video, uh, face. I made like two or three of the two of the dresses in that video. Um, and how did this happen? Well, and, she would come to you like, Bob, I know, I, I know that you can sew. I need a seamstress, baby. How did well, happen? what what actually happened was so I told uh, Frosty Flakes that I was trying to get into um, sewing dresses and making garments and stuff. And um, you know, I'll tell you after this break, actually. Listen, if there's one thing I hate, it is waking up during a hot Los Angeles night and having my sheets stuck to me. That's why I love my Buffy Breeze sheets. They're very comfortable, they're affordable, and they keep me cool all night long. Buffy has Earth's softest bedding. Did you hear that? The Breeze sheets set by Buffy are the softest sheets you will ever try. It is woven from eucalyptus, making it softer than cotton or linen. You sleep cooler. 
Fabric made from eucalyptus is naturally cool to the touch, though, so that's why you're going to be cool all night. It's researched back to be more breathable than cotton or linen and perfect for hot sleepovers and sleepers. It's with natural botanic dyes that are skin safe and better for the planet. Buffy is really awarded and recognized because Buffy products are consistently on the best of lists. An architectural dietist and glamour named the Buffy Breeze Sheet set the best bed sheets of 2023. That is high praise indeed. See for yourself why Buffy has over 50,000 five star reviews. Shipping is free, and if you don't love your Buffy sheets, there's a 15-night return policy on all orders with free shipping on returns and no return fees. Upgrade your bedding with a Breeze sheet set by Buffy. Go to Buffy.co and use code RIVALRY for 25% off your first order. That's Buffy.co. Promo code RIVALRY for 25% off. Have you ever been on the hunt for a new doctor and you ask literally everybody you know for a recommendation? I've asked Bob before and try to get any recommendation for a restaurant, a doctor, a pet sitter from Bob. It's, you get nothing. So I realized I that told I, you, I told her, I said go to Dr. Dre. That's who, that's who, uh, <laughs> you know, a doctor who actually like knows like what you need and they listen to you and they make you feel very comfortable. And you you search, you look, you are looking on the rocks and the cars, looking in the phone book, you can't find one. So you call the office and they do have an appointment available, and that's the one you go to, but then the receptionist tells you that this doctor doesn't take your insurance. Buffoonery! I hate it. Well, wipe your tears away, baby, and put away the ice cream and head over to ZocDoc to find and book the doctor who is right for you and takes your insurance. Now, ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top-rated patient-reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for ones who take your insurance and are located near you and treat almost every condition under the sun, a mole, a limp, an itch, a dry patch. They can help you out. After I tried ZocDoc, I would honestly never go back to doing it the regular way I'm booking doctors because it's just like way faster and it's way more convenient. And every doctor that I find through ZocDoc, Loki, I really like them. And on ZocDoc, you can find every specialist. I literally just went to an allergist, y'all, before ZocDoc. How the heck was I going to find an allergist? And the mobile app is so easy. It's like ordering a car to go. You know what I mean? It's really fierce and I love it. Now, find and review local doctors, read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments. And now when you walk into the doctor's office, you're all set to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com, find the doctor that's right for you and book an appointment in person or remotely that works for your schedule. Go to ZocDoc.com slash rivalry and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search for a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. Rivalry. ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. Go to ZocDoc.com slash rivalry and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z O C D O C dot com slash rivalry. ZocDoc.com slash rivalry. Can I just tell you right now that Factor is genuinely amazing? I love them. I love Factor. They, they sent us those ones and I, I told them Factor's up. They were so good. Now listen, with a busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for some wholesome, convenient meals for jam-packed days. Factor America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit can help you fuel up fast with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Baby, imagine ordering food to order, but you order it once and the food all comes. It's amazing. You'll save time. You'll eat well. You'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle. You can adjust your stride this autumn without missing a step. Choose from 34 plus weekly flavor packs, fresh, never frozen meals ready to eat in two minutes. Level up with gourmet plus options, girl. Prepared to perfection by chefs and ready to eat in record time. I'm not just, I, mean, I know that they sponsored this, this, this podcast. I, Bob and I genuinely, I mean, let me not speak for Bob. I'm going to say for me, Factor Meals I taste love so good. They are delicious. I genuinely <laughs> wish they would send me some more free meals. They're so, so bad. Just send me some more free food. They're so good. Well, Monet, you don't have to give them for free because luckily we have a promo code for you. Oh, I love that. This September, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. Ready in just two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash rivalry50 and use code rivalry50 to get 50% off. 
That's code RIVALRY50 at factormeals.com slash RIVALRY50 to get 50% off. Love it. I am always on the road, and finding a good quality travel toothbrush that's high quality and affordable is really difficult. Most electric toothbrushes are big, they're clunky, and I'm so glad that I found the perfect lightweight and effective travel toothbrush. All right, listen, the Quip electronic toothbrush is loved by over 9 million mouths. A multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter, reusable handles, and a range of sleek metal hues, as well as bright plastic colors to make sure that you have a pop of fashion and color and design on your bathroom counter. Skip the batteries, snap into healthy habits with the new rechargeable electric toothbrush, all the features of the original Quip, plus one magnetic charge that powers up three months of brushing. That's three months of brushing with one charge. On top of brushing, you can upgrade your Quip with a smart motor to track and improve your brushing with the free Quip app. Earn amazing rewards like free refills, products, target gift cards, and more. In addition to brush heads, Quip also delivers a fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months for $7. With stylish and affordable electric brushes starting at just $25, you won't be paying through the teeth for better oral health. If you go to quip.com slash rivalry right now, you'll get 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint, gum dispenser, or water flosser. That's 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint, gum dispenser, or water flosser at getquip.com slash rivalry, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P.com slash rivalry. Quip, the good habits company. So I told Frost that I was trying to get into sewing dresses and stuff. And because I used to make dresses, what happened was I used to, me and uh, I was learning to sew with my friend Frosty Flakes. And I, I put her, I, I made a dress for her for this pageant. It was a really, really pretty dress. Um, and I made the dress, but then Frosty like embellished it with all these stones and stuff. So then people said, they wanted me to do the same thing for her. So she would call them shells. She wouldn't call them dress, she would call them shells. She goes, I want you to make me a shell. And then she does the sewing work herself on the dress. And then oh. she gave me a few dresses. To, and she gave me a few dresses to alter. So she took their two dresses with me, like combined and stuff, and combined and re, re put together. And then one of the, the Kiki is um, uh, years later when BB Zaharbonet was doing her, uh, her uh, Kickstarter or GoFundMe for, um, for her uh, documentary, um, Kisses and Feathers. Um, if you donate like uh, the top tier, which is like a thousand dollars or something, you'll get a dress. And um, BB tried to send me a dress I made. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Don't uh-huh. send me a dress I made you. Uh, obviously, I've met BB a whole bunch. I've done, I've, I've worked some with BB, not a whole bunch, but we've hung out a lot. Most recently, um, our manager had his 40th birthday party, and Bob, BB, and I have the same manager. And um, we were all there, and at his birthday party, they had fucking CC Peniston. They had, they had literally the, 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 Bob four, and S. the, the, four, Crystal Waters. Crystal Waters. Three. The three. The three '90s R&B house divas were at this fucking party, and Bobby and I were just up in the front, in the center, just living our best lives, sweating, dancing, and carrying on. It was so fun. BB, oh, BB does the thing. She goes, and she BB just acting the fool. I love partying with BB. Is honestly a lot of fun. She just really goes out. It's very fun. I agree. BB is um BB is one of one of my biggest inspirations to do drag. Um, I like her a lot, and she has a lot of cocaine. <laughs> BB does not do a lot of cocaine. That is not true. Um, <laughs> let's go on to season. Do we? By the we are at, see. This is why I'm trying to get started early. We're at 32 minutes, and we're oh, on season two. No this way is, we're gonna get through yeah. every through every. There's no way. Um, Shangela Laquifa Wadley is the first girl to go home on season two. The first girl to return to RuPaul's Drag Race, and she is the creator of the Mirror Message. Is she? Yes, yeah, she is. First girl to write a Mirror Message. Oh wow! Do you think did she do that unscripted, or was that was she told to do that? You think? Mm, I don't know. I think she did it on her own, but I'm not 100 percent sure to be honest. Interesting. Um, Shangela Laquifa Wadley. When I think of Shangela, I often think about. <laughs> I think we can all laugh about it now. The pandemic when Shangela went over to PV in the pandemic, and then that boat ended up sinking, and everyone said the reason the boat sank in, in PV was because Shangela went there during coronavirus. It was very. Jesus that's Christ. what I think. About. 
Sorry. Now that's your first thing. Um, <laughs> let's go on to Nicole Page Brooks from Atlanta, Georgia, who was the first queen I knew on Drag Race to have a child. Nicole Page Brooks is a, uh, I don't know if Nicole Page Brooks still identifies, I don't know their gender identity, but I know that Nicole Page, Page Brooks on this show identified as a father and, and she has a child. And uh, Nicole Page Brooks kind of got like tangled up with my mom for a while because my mom was, was producing drag shows in Atlanta. And like Nicole Page Brooks was like trying to get on my mom's show was a whole thing. Nicole Page Brooks has like a lot of like a lot of people reference her. Like I know Willem and Alaska talk about Nicole Page Brooks a lot. I don't know why, but I just know that's a thing. It's because of the way she says her name. I am Nicole Page Brooks from Atlanta, Georgia. Um yeah, Nicole Page Brooks is uh she's she's she was one of the girls who was very good at branding herself and getting her name out there. Um, she's not posted online in a minute. She's not posted since March of last year on Instagram. <laughs> it's like you say in March of last year. That's a good drag name, March of last year. March of last year. Um, let's go into uh, Mystique Summers Madison, who is the uh, I bitch. I'm from Chicago. Um, I think she's. I think she lives in Ohio now. Um, I think she's one of the ones that don't like us. Um, Why? But what do you know? uh, We'll talk about it later. Um, but she's but she's a she's a she's a, she's a pretty fierce performer though. Um, Night. I'm scared to say anything about this bitch. Um, I don't know Nicole um, Mystique Summers Madison, but I wish her the best, and I hope Black is doing her well. Let's go into Sonique, who is uh, uh, one of the winners of RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, she Chicago. is... Uh, she, I think I she, Chicago did not fuck with me and Bob. Chicago wants to see me and Bob on site. Don't me and Bob. Do not, whoa, 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 baby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't me and Bob. Do, you just said she doesn't like us. You didn't say me. You said she doesn't like us. Beep, beep, toot, toot. Toot, toot, beep, beep. You just said you us. You bitch. You just said us. Anyway... Anyway, Sonique is a uh, Sonique. I, I believe is the first contestant to. Um, I believe I don't want to get this wrong, but I think she's the first test contestant to come out as as trans on the show. She did it during her reunion, um, and she is the flipping diva. And to this day, she still is the flip flopping back and forth cartwheel oh, wow. round off back handspring it's diva. So impressive! It's so impressive. I I remember even back then, which I am now. I think Sonique is so fucking sexy. Like, the way that she moves and she performs, the way even her voice, she has a very sultry voice. And I think Sonique is fucking hot. So, Kylie. It's the Southern accent. Kylie Sonique Love. Thank you, Kylie Sonique Love. Um, Let's go to Morgan Mac Michaels, uh, who is kind of like one of the uh, arbiters of, not arbiters, one of the... uh, gatekeepers of gigs in New York in LA like she's kind of like the girl you go to if you want to gig she works at like every club she can get you a gig at all the spots uh she is another workhorse she's the one who just like this girl is not afraid to work it, she is I think she's afraid to not work actually <laughs> yeah I love Morgan uh, I see her often since I moved to LA and uh, before that but um she's um yeah she is if you want, she's working at Long Beach, uh, 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 downtown. She's everywhere, and she's always, always very, always very nice, always very sweet. And Morgan's great. I enjoy Morgan a lot. Didn't she break her hand? She's like, uh, you know, how they, you know how they say, it? yeah, you know how they say, if a shark stops swimming, they'll die. Or I don't know if that's true, but they say it. Morgan's like that. If she, if she stops working, she'll fucking die or something. And yeah, apparently she punched a Nazi and broke her, broke her hand. So yeah. she like. So she like ri- ri- glittered and rhinestone the cast and was like, "It's part of me. It's part of my my whole thing now." Well, you know, so recently I did um sober um sober pride um and the gig was intoxicated, and it was myself, Plastique, Vanji, Morgan, and um Isis and some other Canada draggers girls. Vanji was at a sober girl. So we get there, we're, we're at the thing, and Vanji comes in and she's like, "Ah ah ah ah, where all the liquor?" I was like, Vanjie, this is this is it's it's untoxicated. It's a sober pride. It's like, I was like, okay, so where's the liquor? Only tequila. I was like, no alcohol. You can't have any alcohol at all. She's like, ah, uh-uh, ah, uh-uh. ah. I was like, excuse me. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> 
Oh, hey. a lot of people. Hey. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Sarah Davenport. Sarah Davenport, I met her a few times, and um, she is Sarah Davenport is uh, who is uh, has has uh, gone on to glory. Sarah Davenport has, has passed away. She was an amazing performer. This girl could like kick, turn, jump. She's one of the first like drag race like superstars that I um she lived in new york city as well um that i came across i remember years ago trying i was she she performed at a bar that was a few blocks from my home called sweet at 110 in amsterdam and i remember running up there with a camcorder to try to get a clip of sahara davenport okay. saying my saying my friend's name so we were running like begging sahara davenport to say to be like say say my say her like Trying to get her to say my friend's name on camera for this like competition we were doing to act like she supports my friend. And um what Sahara was like being it was Sahara Davenport, Manila Luzon, pre-drag race, and Nicole Page Brooks. And as they were being ushered into a car out of the club, and I was trying to get her to say say my friend's name, Nicole Page Brooks turns around and she says my friend's name instead. And is like, and get the fuck out of here, you maniac, or something like that. And we loved it. Not a camcorder, you old bitch. It was with a camcorder. That's how old. It, that's how long ago it was. There was there, there was no the, the 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 the. I don't think that the um iPhones took videos back then. I think they were just pictures. This was like cause the iPhone came out in like what two thousand eight. This might have been two thousand like nine, maybe ten. So if they did take video, they were really bad. And what is a camcorder? Like how? Do, I don't understand. Like how does that work? A camcorder is like a it's like a camera like this. Like a camera that you put on your hand and you hold it to your eye. Yeah. You never heard of a camcorder? Isn't that no. what a camcorder is? Am I wrong? Is that not a camcorder? Wait, how did it work? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand either. Do y'all not know what camcorders are? Are y'all being silly? I, I I'm not being I'm not doing a bit I'm 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 not I don't even a camcorder is a camera that takes video not pictures and you there's like a uh it, it's kind of cylindrical right it's like maybe like it looks like this and then there's like a like um, a, a what and you and you and I'm you put your it. hand li listen you don't have to look through you don't have to look through you put your hand through this like slidey part and then this little screen comes out like it's like what uh what um what the mom and mean girls is holding that's the camcorder oh okay and you owned one of these this is like your, you know this is you owned it this is your thing your property where, it where, wasn't my thing where did, i you, yes i owned a camcorder i wouldn't say my thing was having a camcorder but where did <laughs> you put the vhs watch. tape to like record onto there yeah. was no vhs tape it, there, there, well, some of them worked off VHS tapes, some of them did, and some of them had memory cards. And I think ours had a memory card. Yeah, but at this point, they did have memory cards. Were you trying to film Dreamgirls 1985? Yeah, y'all, this is not that. This is not that long ago. <laughs> y'all, niggas was alive at this point in time. It was 2000. Like, what is this? 2009, 10. But I had never seen one or I owned a camcorder. That's you have funny. never seen a camcorder. Not in real life. I've seen it in Mean Girls. How did y'all film videos when you were a kid? We, we didn't have one of those. Uh, but how were you filming videos as a child? We, we camera were, phones I, have I, only been... I wasn't filming videos. Camera phones have only been a thing since like 2012 or uh, maybe 10 or 11. <laughs> y'all are doing a bitch. Shut the fuck up. Let's go to the next person. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is happening? Why do y'all not know the camcorder is? <laughs> what do you have to say about Sarah Davenport, bitch? <laughs> Nigga, put your dick away on Instagram and start fucking doing the, the assignment in front of us. So you the camcorder? Um, I've never met Sahara Davenport. I never had to prove to me Sahara. Uh, one time, when I first started doing drag... No, that, that, that wasn't, I'm, I'm thinking about a different situation. It wasn't Sahara, but I thought I saw her downtown. At, um, remember that, that beauty supply store that was on 35th and 8th Avenue? Beauty 35, it's called Beauty 35. Beauty 35, but it, it's Jay Changing now. Yes, I, I thought I saw her there, yeah. but it was, I think it was someone else. I've never met her, but um, I know. <laughs> not, not, your, not that's your story. 
<laughs> because it's about Manila, but I'll save that story for Manila. So not your, yeah, not your third and fourth stories. I saw the one, but it wasn't her. Uh, Jessica <laughs> Wild, who who is uh, who apparently used to pad her calves or still does to this day. Like her pads go all the way down her calves, where she has like separate wrong. calf pads. RuPaul does that too. That, that's what people will say. I don't know if it's true. Interesting. I don't know, but I don't know if it's true about Jessica Wild either. But I've always found that to be a very interesting tidbit. I'm also looking at how many girls like literally no longer wear pads. It's honestly kind of wild. It's wild, right? It is kind of wild. I agree. It's kind of. I mean, wild. you're one of them, bitch. You're you're I in the know. club. Oh no, bitch! I look great. I don't care. And, and, and saying this wild is not saying that I'm not one of them. I, it's like crazy. Oh, we know. Oh, we've seen your drag. We know you don't care. <laughs> we know. <laughs> I've never met Jessica uh-huh. Wild. I mean, I've seen no, her I'm... perform at, at Mickey's, but we've never like, and besides like a, a, a brief like, hey girl, and never like a, oh my God, like talking like shopping up shop. I don't really know Jessica in that way, but we have met before like that. Yeah, same. I've seen her in passing at gigs, but we've never really talked for long. But um, I love that she's having a, a, a moment now because of, people love her so much on, oh, yes. um, on um, Drag Race All-Stars. Um, yeah. Let's go into uh, Pandora. Pandora Box. I've seen Pandora Ooh. at DragCon. Like, she's always, like, hanging out at DragCon. And, like, um, yeah, Pandora Box. Not always Box. <laughs> You know, I don't have a ton of Pandora Box stories. Pandora's friends with with some of my friends, but Pandora and I are not particularly friends. Like, Pandora's friends with a lot of the, uh, well, actually not quite. I mean, Pandora's, like, I guess the person I know who's close to Pandora is probably um, Dallas Coulter, and, oh, and really? obviously since I moved, yeah, they because Dallas Dallas used to do Dallas used to strip and do drag in upstate New York. She's from upstate. I didn't know that. So it was like Dallas, Pandora, Kasha Davis, and Darian Lake all like hanging out together. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Yeah, Pandora. Actually, I don't know if it was Kasha because I think Kasha started drag later than the other girls. People just say um, Pandora can be a little. Um... Well, I don't know what people say. Right, you know what? <laughs> you know what people say. What do they say? Because I now I want to. We're all, I'm on the edge of my seat. I don't know what people say. I'm just kidding. I'll do the thing. You know what they say? What do they say? They can, that Pandora can be a little, a little bit of a Debbie Downer sometimes. Oh, well, I mean, she, yeah, I think, I think that Pandora has maybe seems sad sometimes. You know what I mean? A lot, a lot of us, a lot of us go through sad. Yeah. A lot of us go through bouts of sadness, right? Let's go into Tatiana now, baby. Tatiana, this girl parties. When I think this girl parties, Tatiana will party until the lights come on, girl. Tatiana, don't play. <laughs> she gets down. She she also would have been at that party going ah 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 ah. What alcohol? <laughs> yes, but I will say it's always a good time. Like Tatiana is very funny to me. She's also she also very like everything you see on online. She is that pretty in real life. She is very beautiful. A very pretty lady. And she's also her attitude, her personality on, on the internet and online is, and on TV is very much who she is in person. Like it is not a bit. She is that. She will be confrontational. She will confront you. She will make jokes. She's 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 really she's a very very interesting person. Yeah, I enjoy Tatiana. I think um, she's actually one of the most unique like queens from the show, in my opinion. And like she's like she's quirky in a way, even though she's not branded as like a Tammy Brown, Katya quirky queen. She's a very quirky person, a quirky person in my opinion. People that use the word quirky, I don't know, how do I say this? They piss me off. I fucking hate people that use the word quirky. It fucking piss me off. Stop using quirky. Yeah, I just piss you off just, just by saying just by saying quirky. I hate it. It's just like a word that people, I feel like people use and don't have another way to describe someone. They're quirky. No, you do have a word. That's the word we're choosing to describe them. I know. I get it. But also, I'm like, use something else. <laughs> Weird stance. Let's go on to uh, Juju B, the Juju Boston B. queen herself. Fun fact, Juju B's name is Airline. 
Um, GB is from the Boston area, um, mm. and she is uh, one of the oh, uh, wow. improv queens of the Drag Race. She's very funny on on her, on, on her toes, and of course, she was she was our uh, cast member in uh, uh, Dimension Twenty on uh, and Dropout. She was unhinged on that. Honestly, y'all seeing a fraction of the uh, of the unhingedosity of Juju Juju B on the fucking Dropout series. She was. Out of control in the best way possible. It was so good. Yeah, I used to give her rides home after each uh to her, to her, to her hotel. She's the only one who didn't live locally. I used to give her rides to her hotel after each uh filming. Oh, we, we filmed in like yeah, we filmed it in Silver Lake. Um, and yeah. then she was and I live in Hollywood. And her hotel's in Hollywood. So I would just drop her off on the way home. Yeah. Wow, that's so nice of you. You should think about giving me rides and stuff. You never gave me rides. Well, she literally begged. Ride. She, well, she literally begged you, and then you 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 fucking spun out in the parking lot and kicked up rocks in her face. Yeah, and, and I had to like yeah, mud, mud in that bitch's face. Yeah. So I had to like pick her up off the ground and like, oh, you okay, girl? Um, let's go on to. Juju, uh, I have another core memory of Juju B. What was it? Juju B and Monet did. Oh, that. Oh wait! Oh no, that was Juju and Trixie who did the gig where they did some college gig, and Juju and Trixie entered to uh, supermodel, and it started with "Once Upon a Time" and the Brewster Projects. Well, there was once a little black girl who's in this. Have you seen this clip? <laughs> they were like, "Trixie, how do, you, how do you want to come out?" And Trixie was like, "Oh, just I just want to come out to supermodel," but then she forgot that it started with so "Once Upon a Time," and Ebony Fashion Fair Talent Scout picked up this little black Negro child. <laughs> That is hilarious. And then the whitest person in the world comes out. Oh my God. We have to now y'all know this. This 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 caused a little contention between me and Bob once upon a time, but Raven what? is my absolute favorite queen. I am I fucking love Raven. Ever since season, Wait, you saying Raven was your favorite queen? Cause can, how did what I, was I mad about it? What I how what was you I? Were, you were mad. Was so you, this is this was you. As you were up, probably obviously doing a bit because this is when she had the um when she did the whole I don't know Bob fuck your purse thing. Oh, you was caping for the bitch that was that was, that was shitting on me. Oh, okay, <laughs> but I fucking love Raven. I still do. Raven is my favorite besides Bob. Um, well, actually, she's a little more. Um, Raven is my favorite drag queen. I, I fucking love Raven. I just love Raven. I don't. I just love Raven. I love Raven. Obsessed. You, yeah, you. Um, Raven is uh, RuPaul's makeup artist. Raven has, was the runner up on season two and All Stars one, and she is. Uh, she's certainly a staple Emmy award winning makeup artist. She's a staple in the world of drag and uh especially in the world of drag makeup for sure y'all should look up um she had this video online for she did like a she was the video model for this song feed me diamonds by mndr on youtube look it up it's so beautiful it's great it's it's a really nice watch if you don't want something fun to watch on, on youtube let's go into king tyra girl king tyra is the winner of um of uh all of Ru- RuPaul's Drag Race season two. Um, he's one who does not like money. Um, and he, <laughs> and, he <laughs> and, and uh, and he's he's certainly a, a very controversial figure in the world of drag, drag and drag race in general. So, for no reason, I had never met this person, we never done anything like I did. There's nothing that I did to facilitate, I was new to drag race, I never done. And just on one of us, I just got a tweet that I, before Drag Race, I did this picture of me as I redid, recreated Grace Jones's white face picture. And then they like tweeted a picture of that and saying this like cooning ass Negro, Kente Claw, black African, dirty, booty scratching bitch. I was like, what? Because I have nothing but respect for King Tyra. I like I fucking Tyra was embarrassed, and I was like, "What did I do to warrant this tweet?" And then we had a exchange back and forth online, and it was like crazy. I became public enemy number one for literally nothing. I had never said or done anything about this person. Imagine if I was like, "This is my favorite track." <laughs> I just Wait. love. That's you. That's how you look. Anyway, Wait, let's what? go to season three. I said, imagine if I was like, this is my favorite drag queen. I love this drag queen. That's how you look with me and Raven. That's how you look. 
<laughs> bitch. <laughs> anyway, oh my god, I just love. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's go into season three. We, we might be able to get through. We might be get halfway through season three. Let's go into Venus Delight, uh, who I believe is from Atlanta, um, and she was the first out eliminated by Shangela in the Christmas uh, Queen Challenge. Venus Delight. Oh, she's, she's a Madonna. She's a Madonna impersonator. I met her one time in Atlanta. I, I lied. Sorry, Phoenix is from Atlanta. So I lied. Phoenix is from Phoenix. Atlanta. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about Phoenix. Yeah. But at one point they said Venus was moving to New York. Phoenix and, and Venus, I mix up. But I had met, I, yeah, I think I met Venus one time, and but I don't remember that interaction, but I did meet her once once upon a time. Um, Phoenix is from Atlanta. Phoenix came to my t- um, filming for, uh, for my uh, special and helped me get uh, the, the, the jungle, which is where I filmed my first special at. So uh, thank you so much, Phoenix, for helping me out with that. I appreciate it. I think she Phoenix, was like a manager there, I, or like, or or I think she was the entertainment manager there at the time. I think. I think Detox and I had a gig together in um. Dang, it's either Detox and I had a gig down there together, or when I when I was filming um that show on HBO uh, with the the monsters, uh, Misha Angela, Lovecraft Country, Daryl, Lovecraft Country, and we were hanging out the night. But anyway, I hang out one night with Phoenix. And she was a, we had a really good time. She took us around to different bars, and Phoenix is very sweet, very nice lady. You were doing background work while Shangela was doing all the hard labor. Anyway, um, let's go into uh, Mimi on first. Mimi on first, the first track. Lovecraft Country, not we're here. We're talking about Lovecraft Country, not we're here. Mimi on first is the first drag race girl I've ever met in my life. It was pre. It was before she was drag race queen, but she's the I first queen. The she's the first one I saw. I didn't actually meet her. <laughs> I, I I like knew Mimi on first and like and like we used to like do do go well, I, we didn't do gigs there. She was she was a little bit more established than I was at this time. Um but she's the first graduate friend that I actually like knew. Mimi, so there was like iconic- she's worked everywhere. When I tell you she worked in every club in the city, she worked everywhere. She was really one of the toasts of the town. There was a there's the, um in New York City they had this iconic <laughs> this iconic series called Queens of New York. And it was kinda like each girl got an episode, a 30 minute episode, or well 15 minute, and they like made this trailer. And Mimi's episode. <laughs> oh my god, what a monster. You're a monster. You're literally a monster. <laughs> she had like a, a, apparently she's estranged from her dad in real life, whatever. But I guess for the series, they couldn't get her dad. So we see the scene in the series of her having this like moment with her dad, who she hasn't seen for a long time, doesn't talk to her. But when he, in real life, that is a paid actor. That is not real. It's completely fake, which is insane. <laughs> that is I mean, insane. It is. There it is. It's still on YouTube, y'all. Look it up. Queens of New York. Meet me on first. And, Watch it. and uh, the, uh, you know, that was, that was a wild. That was Tina a wild. Tina has one. Sherry Vine has one. Um, Bianca Peppermint. has one. I think maybe Peppermint. Asa Betty, Logan Hardcore, Chandelier, I think. Yeah, um, it's good. Maybe not Chandelier. Anyway, let's go on to India Farah, who lives in Las Vegas. No, she moved. She did? She didn't move after Dragon. Where's she now? I don't remember, but I, I remember seeing online she moved. Dox her, dox her. Where is she? Give me her home address. Uh, I think she's. I feel. Like, I feel like she's from Ohio. I feel like she's from Ohio, but I can't prove it. Have you, are you are you aware of this doxy pep thing? No. It's, wait. 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 I have her doxy pep. Oh yeah, it's it's like a prep, but you take it like right before you get fucked or something. It's for it's supposed to be like prep for like oh, it's, it's post it's post exposure prophylactic it's it's post exposure right yeah it's pep for like gonorrhea and, and chlamydia it's okay it's a, it's some sort of a post exposure prophylaxis for gonorrhea is, is it before or after okay yeah is it wait is it before after. Or after yeah like so let's say like got you had a, a crazy weekend and you think you got something you 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 take it um for the couple of days like two or three days afterwards and it will like allegedly stop it from getting sick it's not as as effective as prep a uh, pep like uh um uh hiv pep because that's like 99 percent. this one is like 70 percent. so i'm not 
this is I'm not fully I'm not fully sure if this is true or We're not. We're not doctors, I, by the way. We're not doctors. Um, I believe it's just giving you doxycycline, which is the medicine they use to treat a lot of STIs in general. Mm -hmm. So you get it prescribed to you, and then you just take it for like preventatively. You think you have something on a shorter regimen than if you actually had a full infection. It's a prophylaxis, as we say in the medical field. Just kidding, but it is a prophylaxis. Uh, um, India Farah. I don't know much about India Farah. We. I don't. I think. I, oh, I, I have met her when I did um, the place Piranha in Vegas years ago, and um, she is. A, she's a. She's a sickening makeup artist, and she's a great costume maker. Like India Farah always looks really good. I have to say that. I don't know about like the inner workings of like how she behaved with people or whatever in, in Las Vegas. I didn't hang out there. But seeing her in person, she looked really good, and she was a great performer. Well, I think one thing is clear that she had a reputation, and uh, Derek Barry made it very clear that India has a reputation in Vegas. Um, um, and and it was not—I don't know if it wasn't favorable, but it was not favorable to Derek Barry. Derek Barry did not like her behavior; that we know for sure. Um, and India Fair is one of those. Well, like when it comes to like India Fair, Trixie Mattel, Crystal Method, um, the girls who paint over. She's one of the girls who's just like. Like Bianca de Ruth is almost, almost clowny how intensely they paint. Um, let's go to uh, Mariah Harris, um, Balenciaga. Harris Balenciaga, um, um, who's from Atlanta, Atlanta as well. A lot of Atlanta girls. I, I, I want to. I want a number of how many queens from each city. Atlanta, because uh, Atlanta, New, Atlanta, New York. I'm sorry, Georgia, New York, and L. A. and Los and California have the most for sure. L. A. and California. Sorry, Georgia, that's, that's crazy. New York, and California. Um, uh, Mariah is stunning. Like y'all, and she she's that beautiful in person. She really is. She's absolutely just for me one of the most stunning queens out there. Um, she just looks so good with, it. and you know I love a queen who snatches her hair back and she wears her hair in a tight ponytail, honey. She's one of those girls that uses her own hair. I wish I had hair. I could do that. I wish I had it my own hair. I could just. Scoop my little and give a fantasy. I wish pull up some of your back hair and like switch it around the front. Well, I'm fully lasered, and you know that I don't have no motherfucking back hair. How about you pull up some of that damn beard here? When when does the when does the laser kick in? I wonder when it kicks in. When does it start? Mustache. When does it start taking effect? I was wondering. When does it start taking effect? No mustache. Um. Oh, I want to offer the people a hack. Hold on. So I get this question a lot. I've been growing my facial hair. And people are like on the on a, on a thing on Instagram and DMs like, "Oh, girl, you must be shaving every day." I'm like, I don't. What I did is I got laser hair removal, y'all, in the and I got it in the shape that my beard grows in. So I get laser hair removal here. So when my beard and here, so my beard is growing back in. It literally just does not grow in these places. I have not shaped this up for two weeks now. It just grows like this now. So that's a little hack. If you don't want to do uh, shape ups every whatever, and you do the girl that has a facial hair, just get laser hair removal. How your hair grows, and you won't have to worry about it. Work. Um, I, do we, I don't think we're gonna we, let's try to finish the season. We'll see if we can. Jacob will let us know if we're uh, running out of time. Stacy Lane Matthews from Back Swamp, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, one of the Carolinas. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. She won the snatch game on her season. I thought Stacey Lane did a really good job on her season. I, have I ever met Stacey? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I've met Stacey at DragCon, but not because uh, when she was on, she was on All Stars Four, but we didn't really, we didn't really get to hang out with her because she just did that bit. So we didn't really get to. Hang. She also is like for a while. She was really iconic in the Drag Race <laughs> multiverse with her. The the camcord knows the phone. Actually, never mind the phone. The phone. Her with that phone is so funny. The fact that we like you're not supposed to have phones, and she was just straight up like <laughs> screaming. Um, Delta. Oh, I'm noticing Delta works promo. Even Delta and I have these same earrings on in our promo. Hers are gold, and an All Star Seven minor silver. I want to get those earrings made. I um, Delta work. Is what is this thing on her right ear? That's her bracelet. She's doing like this. Oh, <laughs> you're wild! <laughs> I was like, "God damn, it's an ugly ass earring." Um, so Delta is having like another moment. Like, I mean, I was I was talking to, I was talking to Jay about this. 
Have you ever noticed this, Bob? The way that Delta speaks, it's very authoritative. Like, the way she speaks makes you want to listen to every single word she's saying because you feel like every... Everything she's saying has a lot of importance and gravitas. She could be talking about watching cement dry. It's very intentional the way she speaks, and it's very hypnotic. I, watching her videos, I'm sitting there like, mm-hmm. like, I'm like on the edge of my seat. She definitely, yeah, she definitely speaks with intention. She does not stutter. Um, um, <laughs> sorry, that was. I'm sorry, that, that was. I actually feel bad. I'm sorry. That, that was uncalled for. I apologize. That was that was too much. That was that was too you much. That was too much. I apologize. I I immediately felt bad. Immediately, I felt bad about that. <laughs> because bitch, you be on here stuttering too. So it must be osmosis, ho. <laughs> you fucking it's bitch. Contagious. Uh, um, there's this one guy online who hates me, Monet, and he. Oh my god, you say this every time. We get it. You said it like every. You said it. It's just like he's always like Bob and his little stuttering ass friend. <laughs> you said it every it's time. The only about- thing it is the only thing he says about Monet. Bob and his little stuttering ass friend. Um. Anyway, uh, she's another Emmy Award winner, another Emmy Award winning uh, drag race queen. She did RuPaul's Hair for uh, a couple of seasons. Um, and uh, her show, yeah, you got to watch Very Delta. She also just recently won some podcast awards um, from the LA Times um, for her podcast in three different regions. Um, she is a, uh, I, I'm very happy for her. You know, Very Delta is actually um, a spinoff because it used to be a, a duo podcast with her and Raja called Very That. And then Raja uh, moved on, and then it, it, Delta just took it and they now call it Very Delta. It's a very good podcast. I, I, I will listen to Delta tell me anything. I hope that it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and she does podcast tours, and I it's it's a very good podcast. Delta work is fierce. She's great. Let's go on to uh, Carmen Carrera. How much do you know about Carmen Carrera? <laughs> I don't know much about Carmen Carrera. Um, I've done a few gigs with her. Carmen Carrera is very, when you do gigs with her, she's very, she's very calm. She's not like doing a whole lot. She doesn't talk a whole bunch. Um, and I, I, I liked her season, but what really made me fall in love with her was that, um, uh, Steven Mizell video she did, something about a showgirl. Y'all look this up on YouTube, another YouTube video you have to watch. It is fucking breathtakingly beautiful. It's like two minutes long and it's amazing. Watch it. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm writing down all these things I need to watch. Something, it's called something about a showgirl. It's called, yeah. It's, if, if you type in Steven Mizell, Carmen Carrera, it'll pop up. Steven Mizell? Mm-hmm. M-E-I-S-E-L. Oh, I thought it was called... I thought it was called... Are you saying it's something... I thought you were saying it's literally called Something About a Showgirl, which is kind of a great name for a title. Something About a show. I'm going to go see Something About a Showgirl. Um, yeah, uh, she's one of the first, like, uh, nude queens who was, like, their whole thing is being, like, bucket naked with pasties on Drag Race. Yeah. Um, not saying she invented it. I'm just saying she's the first one I saw do it on Drag Race. I just want to be very clear. I did not say Carmen Carrera invented it. Um... And uh, she's a Jersey girl. Isn't her, isn't her whole thing be like she's like a she's like a like a straight up Jersey girl. Uh, I don't show, have a lot of interaction with her. You yeah. what? I said on the show she was, but in real life, I don't know how how much that. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Yeah, Yara Sophia. Uh, Yara Sophia is kind of hot out of drag. Like I've always thought, Yara Sophia was like oh, Yara Sophia's hot, and this girl is another one who is nutty, kooky, and uh, here it comes, quirky. <laughs> oh God. I can't. She is. She's such a. She's she's very interesting. I, I, sometimes we'll be talking. I'll be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like I literally don't know what. Like I don't know how our conversation got in this direction. I don't know what's happening. You have so much energy. This is wild. <laughs> yeah, um, I met I met Yara a few times. Also in Vegas uh, when I did Piranha, I met her. I, think I met her twice now. Um, very very nice, very kind. Um, Alexis. Because someone has to go home first. <laughs> Would she say that on All Stars or her original season? All Stars. Um, Alexis Mateo. Again, I've met Alexis a bunch of times. We uh, we haven't hung out a bunch of times. Maybe like twice as well. We've never really hung out or done anything like that. We've done like a gig or two together. But no bad thoughts or no bad memories. It was fine. Not a, Yeah, it's just fine. I love this queen. I love this queen. Bam. I think she's such a fucking great drag queen. I was rooting for her on her season of Drag Race this season. 
and I was rooting for her. Um, well, maybe not to win her season of All Stars, <laughs> but I just wanted her to go further than she did. I wanted her to go all the way. I love Alexis. Bam, baby, Mateo. She's. I just think she's so sickening. Truly. <laughs> Alexa Mateo, yeah. I, I, I really liked her her season, but I think that my top two queens I was rooting for were Manila and Raja, but I did like her as well. Manila Luzon, who is um, the, is owner of, the owner of Fine Apple Couture um, with the earring, the the legendary iconic earring. No, her earring is different than Delta's. Hers is like a lightning bolt, and Delta's is a triangle. Oh. Well, yeah. unless, oh, unless it's just in her hair and I can't tell. Yeah, I can't tell either. I'm yeah, maybe sure. the earring is just in Delta's hair, and I can't tell. Um, it looks like the same earring is... Or maybe they had him wolf colors. Who knows? Probably. Manuelzon is stunning. I've always thought she's incredibly stunning. She's the uh, the the owner of Fine Apple Couture. She also um, designed. No. What? What? What's happening? I also can't see your videos off, so I don't know what. Just for all I know, you just got teleported to the next dimension, to the fourth dimension. What's, what's going on? I did the the middle of his husband. No! Oh, oh. <laughs> you didn't fall down too? No! I did. I fell down. I fell down. <laughs> I couldn't see you. I'm obsessed with that. I'm with that story. Every time I watch the video, it's so funny. <laughs> Uh, Manila Lazan, but I don't know. Manila Lazan is a gr- very good graphic designer. She is. She is. That's why they won that little honeybee challenge. Because Manila, when we got that challenge, all starts for Manila. Literally sat there, y'all, and drew the fucking set. Like it was. I was like, this isn't fair. She like drew like this like amazing set. I'm like, well, of course they're gonna do well in this motherfucking challenge, bitch. We don't Manila have to design this shirt. Manila designed this this shirt for Jiggly Caliente, one of my favorite Drag Race merches ever. It's great. She drew this. Manila drew this. That's fierce. I'm not holding. I'm not doing it any justice. Sorry. Hold on. There we I, go. This is Bob. Manila drew this. <laughs> well, it was in front of my face, so I couldn't see if it was if it was. I love to this. Say, it's oh, honestly, it's it's a, it's a it's a little too small for me now. So I'd be wearing it, but I'd be looking like one of them niggas with his belly out. Um, <laughs> but uh, also, oh, so, story, so I was at Beauty Thirty Five in New York City. This is before Drag Race. It was like maybe, but a little after season three. And I'm like in Beauty Thirty Five buying like a, one of my first couple wigs, and I'm in and I in the thing, and I see Manila. I was like, oh my god, it's Manila Luzon. I was like, oh my god. So I go to her. I was like, I was like, I was like, oh my god. Are you? I did the thing that people do to us. Like, are you Manila Luzon? Fully known as her, and she's like, yeah. And um, I was like, can we have a picture? And I don't. I really think she was running late because she was literally moving fast. She's like, sorry, baby, I can't. And I have, I have to go. Um, she's like, but nice meeting you. And I was like, nice meeting you too. Is that where you get it from? Is that is that was is that who taught you to say no to no, say no to all your fans who literally beg you for pictures? I've seen it, y'all. It's it's horrible. It's if you see Monet and Public, do not walk up to her. She will embarrass you. My don't don't even put yourself through it. Mine's gonna get stuck up here. Um, but Raja. Wait, what's gonna get stuck? You said what gets stuck where? I was rolling my eyes, and I was like, they're, they're gonna be stuck up here. Oh, I can't see you. That's the thing. I got uh, your video is off. Is it off for you, Jacob, or is Monet's video on for you? It's off for me. Yeah. On. Yeah. You. Yes. You. On. Let's go on to the winner of season three and um. The real winner of I'm just kidding. I was gonna say of Ultra Seven. That's, I, don't, I don't actually believe. Wow, you're so comfortable. I, I, that was a bit. I don't. I don't actually believe that. Jinx is the real winner. Jinx won. Um, but and I don't mean like Jinx won. No, no. Let, let me let me say that again. Jinx won. Jinx won. All, and I really believe that in my heart of heart. I was just doing a bit. Um, I do love this queen though. Now, now, now I'm like in a hole where like they're gonna be like Bob hates Jinx, and that, then Jinx is gonna call me. Y'all, you see, y'all know this is the real thing. Y'all, y'all have seen the real Bob the Drag Queen. Why I love this. I can't wait to see yeah, this. Yeah, it's the real. Story. Yeah, I'm not the one faking on the internet, honey. <laughs> Raja Gemini. Um, I had never. I had met Raja before All Star Seven, and she. Oh, because we did. <laughs> Raja and I did a Christmas tour together. When Raja did this number. <laughs> <laughs> 
on this Christmas tour, Raja does this number where she brings a Christmas tree out. This EDM music plays, and she just fucks a Christmas tree on stage. It was it was wild. Every night we we're all like, Raja, what is going on? Wait, really? And then, so that was my first experience. Yes, I don't know. It, there, I'm sure there's videos online. It was crazy, and then, um, but then we did. And, but it was fun. Raja's always a good time girl. She always has her wine, even back then. And um, All Star Seven was great. Oh, Raja was so fucking good at All Star Seven. Like we'd be at the hotel, and they would be like, um, "Hey, ladies, we um, because uh, you know, as y'all know, they they take your phones away from you and everything. You don't have anything." And we get back to the hotel, and Raja's like. Um, I need to, I need, I need my man, I need, I need to text, I need to use my computer to, to text and email my manager. And they're like, um, no, I'm sorry. Roger's like, excuse me. She's like, I am 47 years old. You're, you're young enough to be my child. Give me my fucking computer. Please. Thank you. You have the computer? Yes, I get the computer. I'm trying to find the video of Roger fucking the tree. I, I think I found it. I see. What an interesting queen. Um, I love Roger. <laughs> Roger. Roger's very talented. Um, she's, a, you know, Roger's one of those folks who has a long history of um, working in reality TV because she was also working on um, American Next Top Model. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was an industry makeup artist. Um, so Roger's, she's a very, very interesting person. Like, if you ever get to get down, sit down and talk to her, she's like a wealth of information and knowledge and yes. about the LA club scene and about being a scene kid, a drag queen, a makeup artist, all of it. She's really, really interesting. She, she's very, she's very sagacious. Like she gives. What does that, that mean? What does sagacious mean? Like sage, like, like very wise and knowledgeable. I- I never heard the word sagacious. S a g a c i o u s. Sagacious. My thumb is so big. I always hit the button next to the one I want to type. Y'all, shut the Jay, fuck up. Clip this. Clip this moment. Next time this this nigga try to come from my hands, talk about nigga. Your your fingers is so big. You hit multiple buttons at one time. That's not my. I don't have that problem with your big ass hands. But you hit multiple phones at one time trying to press a button, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> all right. Let's see, y'all. We will we will be joining y'all next time. We will start, I guess, with season four. I don't know if we're going to do these back-to-back. Because I realize it's going to take us a very long time to get them. <laughs> <laughs> we are on season okay, four. This is season- How many episodes is it going to take us? Well, I mean, if if we stay at this rate, it'll be, uh, th- 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 where, what's that, it's episode 16? Three, six, uh, then again, that's two more. So it'd be like maybe four, five episodes. Five. Um, all right. Well, we'll see you all next time. We'll, 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 we will pick up with our hot take on Elisa Summers. <laughs>